welcome to the video concerning about commuting by bike, winter edition. Hello, this is Janne. Have you ever thought about starting the bike to work? It's a great way to get exercise year round, but it's important to do it safely and comfortably, especially in the winter. If you are new to the cycling to the work and want to know about general starter kit for the commuting, check out the video link in the description, which covers the proper bike selection, lock placement, and the other need to knows. That video can be found in the description, so you can easily move there from that place over there. This video will mainly cover example for the clothing what can be worn in winter cycling. This time I thought I'd divide the video in the corresponding clothes by the frost reading. Personally I'm pretty warm bloated and that's why I like to wear certain type of equipment in certain temperature. If you feel that my choice of clothing isn't really right for you in terms of frost resistance, then I recommend putting on thicker clothing and more layers. Then, if it's too much, begin reducing layers from there until you feel yourself comfortable. In terms of my own commute, I like the fact that 30 minutes of a cycling trip is clearly called for about 10 minutes. That is one third. After that, when the body starts to heat up, I'm quite comfortable. And when I get to the work, I'm not sweating like a pig. At the moment when the sun rises is about 9 o'clock at the morning and it goes down about 4 p.m. That's the why you need to have good reflections and the lights. But let's go through the equipment for different frost readings. Let's start with the footwear. If I'm going to bike near the positive temperatures, then I'll usually wear rubber boots. And when it starts to get few touches of frost, I use thicker and warmer socks. My current rubber boots are Trenton and they have the small insulator inside. On my legs I use Revolution Race Pants. They have this reflective tape put on the back and the front, so I'm visible to cars. To the top, I bought 2017 this Fjell Raven jacket, and since then it has been used a lot. But for this winter, I decided that I will going to upgrade my jacket to shell jacket, like this, which again has this reflective tape on the sides, on the back, and the outer edges of the hands. Under the jacket, I only wear polo shirt or t-shirt. I will also mention that it's worth choosing a jacket with ventilation opening at the armpits. If needed, you get cool air to inside of the jacket easily and you are not soaking wet when you get to the work. The helmet, the same helmet what I use in the summer, has received an additional light with USB connector to light my way. I have also additional light at the handlebar and third is at the back of the bike in the seating pole. Under my helmet I have a warm beanie and on my hands some comfortable leather gloves. Now we are getting to pretty normal winter temperatures for here in Finland. With weather like this you need to use winter boots. My boots are the Colombian titanium shoes. I have bought this fast lace replacement. You just pull the string and then you are tightened it up. Just make sure that the rest of the strings are not stuck into the pedals. During the winter times you want to find boot what has this good bottom and in these shoes I have this Michelin winter compound which really sticks to the snow and ice while walking. I bought those shoes several years ago, so you just need to go to your local winter shop and ask best materials in frosty environments. At these temperatures I keep those same revolution race pants on my legs. Under those I have underpants and they are made from merino wool. It's really good material, it breathes well, and they are really quick drying and they keep me warm. Closer to minus 10 Celsius I use long sleeved shirt or a merino wool shirt and when the weather gets closer to minus 20 degrees then I use this light quilted jacket under my shell jacket. When you are buying quilted jacket check how the zipper and zip fastener is made. 
you don't want to have your zipper frozen and then pressing against your face or the neck. To help avoid that, I would also recommend using the choice of the pipe scarf to protect your neck and facial area, in some cases also ears. For the clothes, I recommend going with the leather ones with thick insulator. I bought these lobster gloves last winter. That's what you get when you go to the big market and you are hungry and you make rushed decisions. In my case, they will going to end up in a recycling pose. And with years of experience, there's nothing like good leather gloves. In this weather, you really want to think about where do you store your bike because you want to have it on the warm before you leave to work. If you have ended your last trip with the smallest or with the biggest gear, then good luck with that. In weather like those, gears are not working correctly and you have to go whatever gear you have on. If you are like an owner of an electric bike, then you want to store your battery inside in a warm area. When you head out, it's really important to cover the sensitive area on your face and also in your neck. In terms of clothes, in this weather, you really need to use those wool socks that has been made by your mother or grandmother. The thickest sock you can find. In this weather, I use same winter boots as before, but I have this much thicker socks on. With merino wool underwear, I also use good winter trousers. On my torso, I like to use really warm winter jacket. If I use this jacket in normal daily activities, then I will be sweating like a pig. If you have an eye for the fashion, I'm sorry, I've messed this jacket up with the reflection tape too. For the hands, use the gloves what has been used in snowmobile trip. On your head, you need thick beanie and few pipe scarves. Tip, you can put your pipe scarf underneath your beanie and it will securely cover your ears. A few extra tips for the winter biking. Like mentioned previously, when you get your destination, put the bike into whatever gear what would be good for the next time when you start riding the bike again. It will going to be frozen if the temperatures go low and especially during the overnights that kind of stuff do happen. And what you truly need is a good spike tires made for winter. As you can see there is a spike, there is a spike. So there is two spikes in a row. It will keep you upwards all the time. Also, many times I have wondered why the clothing manufacturers don't put the reflective tape to the clothes right away. My advice is to find good tailor to put reflective materials on your jacket and your clothes and then you will be visible when you are riding your bike. In snow or in darkness or in both, it is really hard to spot someone in black or dark colors and you are putting yourself to the risk. Add some reflective material to be safe. Clothing is the hardest part of the winter biking. Once you find your set of clothes suitable for different weathers, it's really easy to check the temperature in the morning and then put necessary clothes on. With these tips you can start biking during the winter and once again in the description in this video there is another video about commuting biking. You want to check that out for the even more info. If you have questions, leave them in down below and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content on well-being, health and ergonomics, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you find this video helpful and see you at the next one.